to the cold, clear waters where the big brutes lurk, to massive woods, wetlands, and wide open country where big game trophies, elusive game birds, and all living things reside. Welcome to a world where the exciting challenge of outdoor adventure takes away tensions and the time clock never ticks. Welcome to another educational outdoor video, custom produced by Bay Winkleman Productions, with you in mind. Come along for explosive fishing action and never-to-be-forgotten hunting trips. Whatever the creature, we'll be your teacher. And that's not all. We'll be meeting the gurus of the great outdoors, guides and outfitters, conservationists and tournament pros. So, at least for a while, put everything else aside, sit back, relax, and let the wonders of a wilder world take you wherever you want to be. You know, every once in a while, systems for catching fish come along that are destined to withstand the test of time. More often than not, they're quite simple ideas that almost anyone could have come up with, and the Lindy Rig may be the best all-time example of that. Simply put, a Lindy Rig is a combination of a small hook, light monofilament leaders, and various sizes of walking sinkers, which allow line to be fed through the sinker without the fish detecting resistance. It's a simple, almost foolproof system that keeps live bait offerings near the bottom where many game fish often feed. You can jig them, you can troll them, you can drift them, you can cast them, and you can even still fish them for just about any kind of fish that gets hungry. And without a doubt, Lindy rigs have accounted for more big walleyes than any other system ever invented. But that's not the end of the story, because along the way, someone went and made it even better, if you can believe it. By adding various kinds of colored floats to the end of the leaders, it was discovered that the combination of colored floats and live bait floated off the bottom in what I call the walleye strike zone, often produced more fish than the standard rig. And although it may be a remake of the same old song, floating rigs are a big hit for walleyes, as you're about to see. Watch this. Pretty good fish. That sun is so bright right now. Oh, that's a couple pounds. Yeah. Ouch. Three or four pounds. Maybe. Come here. Nice work. That's a pretty nice walleye. I mean, it's not a biggie by any means, but by anybody's standards, that's a decent fish. Here, take off. You know, the kind of walleyes that good eaters, if you will. I've got a few of them at home right now, so I don't particularly need to keep any for eating. But the pattern we're going to talk about today, or this particular time of the year, there's some really big fish around. If I can get the bait I want, I'm going to try a little bit smaller one for a change here. Sometimes smaller baits are better. And sometimes it takes real big baits. Let me, I'll get this rigged up here and show you what we've got. This is a floating jig head. This particular one happened to be a floating quiver jig. Uh, an orange floss thing with a black head on it, and I'm using a, a pretty good size shiner on the back of here. Let me get this one down and let him swim around while we talk about it. Because that's by no means the only type of floater, nor is it the only color, nor is it the only kind of a bait to put on the back. I'll get this to the bottom. I'm sitting right on the edge of a drop-off right now. Okay. Now, I shouldn't do this, but I'm going to do it anyway, and I'm going to set the rod up. For example, in early spring, in a post-spawn condition... Wait a second. Now, we're still floating along. It's really calm out here today. Anyway, I was saying, in early spring, in a post-spawn condition, a lot of times that the big walleyes will come up in the evening, or sometimes during the day, up on gravel rock shoals. They'll hang on the drop-off, and then a couple of them might scoot up and go across the top of that gravel bar during the day or at odd times. Little groups will break off of there. Those fish are usually really touchy, and if you use a floss type of a floating jig in that condition, it's generally too much. There, if you just take the little balls like this, it's just a little cork ball and different colors of them. Um, with a minnow on it, or in some cases, a big night crawler, and let the thing float up there and just work it super slow. That's an excellent presentation at that time of the year. Usually when this, the floating jig, it'll be really good, will be when the fish are still on minnows and the water temperature will be below, say, 56 degrees or so. 
Uh, once it starts to get above there, then you can catch it better usually on crawlers or leeches. It's still up until it gets into the 60s, you want to check them all. Now, there, this kind of a floater, the felt floater I mentioned earlier, would also work in spring. It adds a bit more size to the thing, but not near as much size as you get with a floss-bodied one. But it adds more size and more color, floats very highly. The bigger models like this, if you're using larger minnows, may be a better option than the little cork ones because the minnows may have a tendency to go to the bottom and this will keep them up higher. Let me move up here just a little bit because I'm coming up too shallow. There's a whole bunch of walleyes down here, I'm not kidding you. I've been fishing here the last couple of days and there's just some incredibly nice fish as well. That's why I wanted to share this pattern with you. Let me keep going here as long as the fish are not going. These spinner ones, now here, I'll put it back down again. These spinner types like this, uh, the spinning blows, those all start using when you get into summer patterns and you get a, a, like packs of walleyes that really get on a move, where they're very aggressive. This has got much more, uh, much more appeal to aggressive fish. It gives off a vibration pattern, even though they're little tiny rubber wings, as you can see. Um, but still will float a bay up, bait up high and also will give the flash, if you will, of a spinner type of a blade without the weight problems with it. There's, there was a lot of fish this last time and that slid off them. I'm gonna put a bigger minnow back on now. Sometimes, you know, this fish will be sitting there and they'll get active off and on. I mean, when you find a school of fish, that doesn't mean all of them are biting that particular minute. I promise you most of them won't be. But some of them probably will be. And you come up to them, you're working back and forth, and you take an aggressive one, a couple of them here, a couple of them there. And every once in a while, I like to throw a real big minnow down. In this particular case, I'm using the minnows to see if a big fish in that school or if there's one that joined the bunch um, make it a little bit more active. Doesn't always work, but even if it doesn't, it seems like a better thing to do, so I try and do it anyway. I think I got one. Yep. I don't know if it was a weed or not. Sometimes you got to test them a little bit. I do that. You notice how I held my finger? I'll take a chance on it here. Hold the finger like so, real lightly against the spoon, and then just lift the rod up real lightly. Just pick up on it. You want to feel the pressure and feel for a little bit of, of electricity. And when you feel it, then just back off and let her go like this one has. Be prepared to strip line, too. I like to give them a little bit of time because that's a fairly good-sized minnows. Sometimes the biggest fish don't hit real hard either. Oh, boy, this is a good fish. Boy, this is a much better fish. They're all good fish. <laughs> no mistake, but this one's heavier by a ways than what I've been catching here. Minnow pail is in the road. Oh. It's a, oh. Straight down to the bottom. This fish I can't lose. I can't tell you how big this thing is. Come on back here again. This thing is humongous. She's wrapped around the line. Oh. 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 This thing, thing is a cow. Boys, right in the jaw. Oh, stay back. This is this is above and beyond a trophy fish. Where's my hook out? When I want to find something, I can't find nothing. I just hand that thing. This fish has got to be 13 or 14 pounds. At least that. Oh, that's one of the largest walleyes I have ever caught in my life. 
Hey now, I know the difference between standard Lindy rigs and floating rigs may seem rather insignificant, but in fact it can make the difference between a good day and a great day. And as you're about to see, floaters are a totally different kind of presentation. And in this next segment, you'll see something else that's kind of different. A floating rig that invades the walleye strike zone all right, but as you'll see in a style that's all its own. See what you think. There's fish down here, I can see them. I believe I got one. I believe I got one coming here. Got a fish? Yeah, I got one playing with it. Now I got it. Good shot. He feels good, too. Wow. I didn't know if you had a fish there for a minute. Well, he kind of came from behind it. He must have. Well, that looks like pretty nice fish. Yeah, it's a dandy. I'll get in. Hang on till I get him a little more tired, and I'll bring him over here. Here, I'll hit that drag a little spot for you. Ah! Ooh, I just about dumped him out. That's a good one. Nice fish again. Ah, hold still. Nice fish. This one's them, a good Them crawler harnesses work pretty good. Yes, sir, they do. Incredibly good bait. I don't know why somebody hasn't thought of that before. A nice shot. That's a nice color, a nice combination. What you call a good eater. You know, there's about everything that you can imagine has already been discovered in fishing lures. On the other hand, every once in a while, a better mousetrap comes along. And I got one here that we're working with today that we have just found to be incredibly good. Let me show you what I'm talking about. It's kind of the best of two worlds of two old favorites for walleye fishermen. Combines a spinner here and contrast color spinners with a series of floats into a floating crawler harness. And I'll tell you what, the combination makes for one heck of an effective bait. You get color contrast with it. You get the vibration advantage of a spinner. You get the advantage of having the baits floating up off of the bottom into better view of the walleyes. And they simply like the thing. Yeah, there's quite a few different species of fish like this here. I, I've had several different ones. I even had a muskie take it the other day. Oh, yeah? And he really hit that, baby. I didn't land him, but he, he went for it. He bit it off, huh? <laughs> That's not designed necessarily as a muskie bait, but... No, not with a 10-pound test line. Here's the worm blower in the crawlers here. Now, we're fishing today on the edge of a little bitty reef here, just a rock reef, and there's a ledge out here, and simply back trolling them along very slowly. The blades on the spinner, or on this floating crawler harness, are Indiana-style blades, so even at super slow speeds, just pumping it like that, you can get a good spin and a good vibration off, off uh, the bait. Where other types of blades, sometimes you've got to be working them really fast in order to get a vibration. With an Indiana blade, you don't. And that seems to be a key today, is a very slow kind of a hopping motion and letting that thing float off of the bottom and just trucking it along and catching a bunch. Yeah, you know, when, when you throw the lure in the water and you, you just move it a little bit and the thing spins. Oh, there we go. Oh. Now it looks pretty good. That's another butte. Every time we come by there, there's a, I can see it on the locator. Boy, this is a big fish again, heavy fish. There's a little rock slide or something there. I, I didn't get no bite this time. And I can see those fish are stacked a couple of feet off of the bottom. He just pounded. Good shot. I mean, he just slammed it. He doesn't look like he wants to come this way very easy, does he? That old rod's really doing a razor back. Yeah. I'm gonna keep us up here in position. Wind keeps blowing Getting kind us of windy out here today, mm -hmm. you know. Unless well, I wanted to get up. Have you seen him yet? Yeah. I can see him. He's a good one. Oh, there I can see her down there. Look at it. Yep. No, she's just still in parade. Yep, she's not ready yet. Oh, I'm telling you, this one just won't quit. People say walleyes don't fight, man. They don't catch the same color walleyes that I do, then. 
You get light tackle on these things. That one just don't give up. I know, it's a big fish. You get a shot at her? There she is. All right, got it. Wow, good shot. Nice fish. Yes, sir. Scrappy fish. Scrappy fish. Just by that back hook, too, you know? Sometimes you gotta have the two hooks that a crawler harness gives you, rather than just one hook like a Lindy rig, you know? That one make good plays. Oh, they're all gonna. You know, those loons must have a nest on that island or something. Oh, I don't think so. They, they don't go on that high, that high. They just have a nest right on top of a mushrat pile or something. Of course, there isn't any of them around here, so maybe they do have one on there somewhere. I don't, I don't know. know, but they, she's been just kind of cooing neat little sounds and stuff. Sure, hanging around here all day. All of, all day they've been around that little island. Well, on the other hand, and screaming there's a reason it. that the walleyes are here. Yep. And maybe the same reason that's drawn the walleyes here, drawn the loons here, called a pile of minnows, huh? I don't know. I see him keep diving down. Them, you think them loons really nail those minnows? Oh, yes. I see them going under the water every once in a while. I, I, you know, you can't tell if they're nabbing anything or not. Do you ever see one of them things swim? Yeah. Ah, oh, they can swim fast. They go just like a torpedo. I know it. We had one back in, in Dark Bay one time. Kevin Hoffman and I were fishing back there. And it was a loon. I think she'd lost her mate or something. I don't know. But when we come back in that bay, we're fishing walleyes. And that loon came over to our boat and started getting up on its wings and flapping and, and making sounds. It was like doing a courting ritual with us. And then it'd dive and it'd swim underneath the boat and it'd come up this side and freak out and go underneath the boat. For three hours, that loon just trucked around and went crazy. It must have went under the boat 50 times. And I mean, it could go from there to there and just boom, and it was over there. I couldn't believe how fast it could swim. I never forget the first time I saw that. We're coming on to Rock Finger here again, be ready. I was uh, watching the loon, you know, and he went under the water, and I didn't pay no attention to it, and I was standing up on top of the front and uh, looking down in the water, and all of a sudden that oh. loon came. Did you feel pretty good? I haven't got there. I finally caught up with him. I'll get my line out of your road. He smacked it, and then he must have ran ahead 40 feet. That drag just right. That's another decent fish. And yeah, you got him coming. Oh, yes, that's not too bad. That's no, not it's not bad. bad. Wow, look oh, at that. She's going down there. She's going down. Come on. Boy, that water's so clear you can see that fish eight feet down. Look at that thing. It just, just reflects. You just, just see it glow Just down. like a magnifying glass. There, I think I got her coming. I wish... You there it? you go. Good shot. Good shot. Yeah, it really is clear. I wish they were, they were as big as what they look like when they're in the water. <laughs> yeah, I thought this one was five or six pounds myself. It's a nice fish, but I mean, it's yeah. anything but five or six pounds. Well, these are good four pounds, though. Well, this is not too bad. Sharp hooks on it, puppies. Right on that finger again. Where's my curly? Well, I didn't get one that time. Yeah, you will. Oh, I, uh... You got that one big fish earlier. Boy, you sure got enough stuff there. What, what do you do? Do you really need all of those colors, or do you just like to carry around with a lot of lures? No, I sell it out of the back of my truck. <laughs> no, I... Uh, you know I don't. But I like to have a lot of everything. If there's, there's no more sickening feeling in the world than being out there fishing and you're catching them on one color of bait and you lose that bait and you don't have another one like it. You ever been in that situation? Yeah. I guarantee you I will never be in that situation I've again. I've also been with, with uh, people when I had one that worked and, and everybody wanted one. If I wouldn't have had a half a dozen, I, I couldn't help them Absolutely. Out. Absolutely. Now, actually, this floating crawler harness is a new thing that just came out this last year by Lindy's. It's, like I said, it kind of combines the best of two worlds. You know, if you think about it, if you're fishing a spinner on the bottom, like on a, a, a standard walk and sinker or something like that, when you, if you're just jigging it and working it slowly around, the weight of that spinner has got to pull the bait that you're using down onto the bottom, making yeah. it more difficult for the fish to pick up. 
if you could get that bait a foot or so off of the bottom, I mean, that's the key. Look at how high this thing floats. Now, I've done something else with it as well. But you see, my sinker's down there, and it'll float just dandy. It'll float it, as you can see from the angle here, it'll float it six inches to a foot off of the bottom. Yeah. I've also given it a shot of air with the worm blower here. Just pump it in the back and give them a little bit like so, and it just helps it to hold it up a little bit higher, so even if you're trolling fast, it'll still keep it up off of the bottom, yeah. easier for the fish to get at. Yeah, you need to be off of the bottom. No question. You want to be close to the bottom a lot of times for walleyes. Also helps them getting hung up, too. You know, when you get the, the lure up a ways, that hook won't get caught as, as easy. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I've got us way off past this reef here. I'm going to pull this up here a little bit and then slide it back down that edge again. But Cause that was, I don't know if those fish moved to one end or another. We made a pass through there and we never popped the fish we should have. What a beautiful day out here today. There's a fish. Uh-oh. Looks like you got a good one. Oh, I got your line, Dad. Uh -oh. I got your line here. Oh, I don't... Oh, I thought I lost him. Where are you? Hang in there. I got one, too. Got a fish? Yeah, I got one. Good shot. I got a good fish here. Here. A double barrel here. I got a nice fish on. Is this so they don't get their tails twisted up there? Oh, well, I'm trying to keep them from it. I'll kind of leave mine out there a little bit. Can you make her alone? Well, I don't have a choice, do I? Oh! oh. Gotta Sorry. Get, got to get a little closer. This is not easy to do one-handed. Ah, that's oh, a nice boy, fish. That's a good one. That's a dandy. Well, that must be about a five pound. It's a big fish. <sighs> I still got this guy going. What have you got he's there? slipping my clutch, so. What have you got? I got to tighten the thing up a little bit. I can't, I can't keep him coming. Yeah, I'll get my stuff up. Well, that was a nice fish. Yeah, that was a dandy. Ooh, that's, hey, that's a beaut. In the uh, Ooh. Ooh. Oh, oh, no, he broke your line. Broke her right off. Oh, no. That fish was eight or nine pounds. Oh, shoot. Well, that's the way it goes. Holy bucket, that was a nice fish, and then a guy has to break the line. Isn't that something? You know, I it, guess that's fishing, though. That's the way it goes. Yeah, but it's a cardinal rule. How many fish have we caught here, and there's been so many fishing, forget to cut off a few feet of line and retie it. Yeah. And a guy should do that after every three or four fish. Yeah, I suppose. I mean, that's... You know, part of the beauty of floating rigs is that you can put them together in a number of different ways to match the situations you're fishing. Be versatile. Try short snells. Try long snells. Depending upon how far off the bottom you have found the fish with your sonar. And also, try different colors, sizes, and types of floats, and vary your presentation until you find the right combination for that day. Do what successful fishermen do. Has the fish what they want, and then give it to them. And whether you consider yourself a pretty good hunter or a fisherman, or if you'd like to become one, here's another tip that always pays off. Keep on studying. We're never too old to learn. Get your hands on videos like these, read books or magazines on your chosen sport, attend educational seminars at local sporting goods stores or sports shows, and of course, don't forget to tune in each week to Good Fishing and Outdoor Secrets. As you learn to catch more fish and bring home more game, please keep your responsibility to the future of outdoors foremost in your mind. Don't necessarily kill your limit, because limiting your kill often may be the better option. Treat nature and all its resources with the respect they deserve. After all, the future of our sport lies in our hands. Hey, until next time, good hunting and good fishing. Feel the excitement. It's the action-packed, information-filled world of Babe Winkleman. Hall of Fame angler and America's foremost fishing educator. Be a part of it with Babe's entertaining educational books and videos and quality research team products and accessories. 
The secret's out. Babe's Fishing Secrets Educational Video Library is the hottest collection of fishing videos ever produced. Choose from 27 exciting fishing secrets titles, including 12 brand new releases this year. Getting any lately? Now you can learn to master the patterns of nature with expert tips from some of the most respected outdoorsmen in the world. Babe Winkleman Productions is proud to present this dynamic new collection of in-depth how-to hunting and fishing videos. If you're a serious sportsman, you'll want to check them out. See what you've been missing with Babe's Fisherman's Favorite Polarized Sunglasses. Available in gray or amber, large, medium, and clip-on styles. They're the finest fishing sunglasses money can buy. It's every tool a fisherman needs, right at your fingertips. Babe's Angler's Edge Toolkit is actually 10 fishing tools in all, including this unique five-in-one pliers that easily removes paint from jig eyes, just like that. They're the best guides on the water. Babe's critically acclaimed comprehensive guidebooks are must-reading for beginners and pro anglers alike. Considered the Bible of modern fishing technique, these volumes are guaranteed to make you a better fisherman. Don't miss the boat. Look for Babe's tapes, books, and research team products at leading tackle, sporting goods, video, and department stores everywhere. And feel the excitement in the action-packed world of Babe Winkleman Productions.